Hello, Nadia's fabulous audience. Thank you so much, Nadia, for having me on your channel. My name is Natalia from Nat's Astrology, and today we're going to talk about love, that thing that is so complex but that we all want. There are problems that we undergo when we're talking about love, like who are we going to connect with, and why do we keep falling into some of these similar patterns of attracting people that we don't really need in our life, or changing ourselves for certain people or just being unsatisfied in our relationship because something is missing, something is just not right there. So the first step of trying to figure out these problems is that we need to understand ourselves. And by understanding yourself, you're able to understand who you are attracting into your life and why and what you really want that makes you feel comfortable and beautiful. Now astrology can help us, uh, so we're going to look at the moon. The moon is about what is familiar and what is comfortable. We're also going to look at Venus, although if you want to check that video out, that is on my channel. And if you want a full course on dating and astrology and how you can use astrology to improve your dating and your relationship life, you can also check the link in the description and take the course right there. So the moon is what we find familiar and it's familiar because it talks about how we grew up and what that kind of experience was, what that atmosphere was. So now we go out seeking these things. So being able to recognize what exactly happened when you were growing up and how that made you who you were and how that talks about what you are more likely to go after or attract. And if you grew up in a household that was very tense, you're actually going to attract uh, relationships where it's going to be this ambiance of a lot of tense energy. Now before we get to each individual sign, I want one big point to hit home for you, and that is that love, dating, it's not a game. Love is about connecting. We are connecting with ourselves, understanding ourselves, and what that, that is attracting into our life. And then we are meeting this other person, and we're not seeing this them as an object or as this idea that we are projecting onto some other being, but we are actually looking at this other person and saying, well, who are they? All right, so I've got my notes right here, and I'm going to be asking just a couple questions as we go through this. So we're going to talk about your childhood home, and from that, see where you tend to go, what you tend to attract, what is familiar. And also, I'm going to ask you to delve into a certain theme that this brings up. So of course, we're going to start with the Aries sign. All right, Aries, you likely grew up in a household that was super lively, super active. There was a lot going on. Um, might have been pretty crazy. Physicality was very important. You were likely in a lot of sports, put in a lot of sports, or there was just a constant, you and your siblings were just running around doing a bunch of crazy stuff and getting into trouble, taking risks, getting into accidents, and not necessarily having that uh, family figure that is saying, okay, be careful, be careful what you're doing, or you can't do that, so kind of feeling free to be yourself and do what you want. So take what you can connect with in that and see what you tend to attract and what that says about your relationships. So maybe you get really bored if a relationship does not have that constant physical body stimulation. If you're not doing things together, then it's kind of like, oh, what's the point? This is boring. Let me go somewhere else. So just recognizing that that is something that you need and that boredom is something that in a relationship you're not comfortable with at all and seeing what you can do with that knowledge of yourself. So Moon and Taurus, you probably grew up in a household that was actually very stable. Things were reliable, things were consistent, things didn't really change much. There was a kind of just relaxing, uh, very comfortable kind of you're getting fed and very well taken care of. Your nurturing parent was probably very loving and supportive, attentive, and you can rely on them. Uh, perhaps they were a bit protective as well, uh, but you knew that that was for a good cause. <laughs> so take what you can uh, from that 
storyline, uh, connect it with your own family storyline, and then see what that means about who you tend to attract into your life and where you tend to go uh, relationship-wise and dating-wise. And I want you to consider too, what is your relationship to change? So if you're in a partnership and things feel like they're changing, do you flow with that change or are you going to put on the brakes and be really adamant about not changing and seeing how that kind of reaction uh, is positive or has been positive or negative and can be helpful or harmful. Any disruptions in the structure, uh, how does that make you feel? Alright, Moon and Gemini, so you probably had a very lively childhood, probably lots of family, uh, people everywhere. There was constant stimulation, you maybe had like a, an abundance of toys or just there was always someone to talk with, you were never truly alone. You're probably learning how to do many different things as well or at least having that interaction with a lot of different things and different objects and different experiences. Uh, your childhood may also have been divided in two for talking about the twins and that is what allowed you to have so many people to talk to. Siblings as well are very important. And you may have been connected with them emotionally or just very well bonded in that way. That the sibling is an important relationship growing up and considering that relationship and how uh, that was a part of uh, your daily life and how that relationship and that interaction influences you now and today. You probably also grew up in a household where there were many different languages being spoken and just routine was very varied. Because there was so much stimulation, perhaps uh, you didn't really delve into emotions, you're forgetting about the emotion of sadness or anger because you're just easily uh, being distracted by someone else or something else. So take what you connect in that story and consider your own childhood upbringing and see what that says about the people you attract in your life. And I want you to consider as well, what is your relationship to routine? So in your connections, your relationships, is routine something that is causes you to run away or is that something that really just feels very uncomfortable and being able to recognize that in yourself and consider how to make a relationship not as routine uh, so that can be healthy for your comfort and your familiarity. So Moon and Cancer is likely that this mother nurturing energy was something that was very dominant. So maybe you did have a mother who was very always kind of all up in your business, <laughs> but in a very caring way. The parental figure may also have been pretty emotional, so maybe there was a lot of emotions going on. So you're very used to taking care of others. So recognizing uh, that part that you connect with in that story and what that says about who you tend to attract. Do you tend to attract people who you need to take care of? And because care and touch and this strong connect, close connection is very important to you, if there is this feeling of disconnect, how destabilizing that is, and what it means for a, a partner to disconnect and why that is something that incites fear in you. Moon and Leo. So you probably had this really nice childhood where you always felt that you were very supported. You were constantly being affirmed for who you were and what you brought to the table. You're very much appreciated. It's also likely that you got lonely as well. That loneliness may have been this kind of factor because you really enjoyed being around people because people were the ones who were able to prop you up and really see the value in you. So loneliness may have been uh, destabilizing. Having people that are involved in your life, that are there for you, supporting you, and that is also something that you give people nowadays. And the importance of entertainment in your life, being the spotlight, being the center of attention, and what that means. So take what you can connect with, and then seeing what that means about who you tend to attract. Do you tend to attract people, or do you want to attract people? people who are going to really value who you are. That's really important to you. It makes you feel comfortable. You're familiar with it. So if you don't have that in a relationship, then it's unsatisfying and you're not as well supported as you'd want to be. So what is your relationship to affirmation and appreciation? So Virgo, it's likely you grew up in an environment where you felt like you always needed to do more. You needed to be 
perfect. Uh, perhaps your parents were constantly comparing you to your siblings or just to other people in general. There can also be this element of anxiety or depression as well. Anxiety because there is this constant feeling of having to be something uh, that you haven't reached yet. So a constant feeling of having to become better. And maybe this kind of depressive element in that realization that you can't be who others want you to be. So take what you can connect with in that story and see what that means about where you tend to go and what that says about your relationships. So what is your relationship to criticism? So if you're with a partner and the partner starts to criticize you or maybe you tend to attract people who are critical because that to you feels familiar. So recognizing that tendency and understanding what exactly that means about who you're attracting and what you want in your life. And if your partner is not the critical one, being also aware of your own kind of uh, self critiques or you critiquing the relationship. So you taking the place of other people and feeling like your relationship has to be more. So being just aware of that tendency and seeing where that leads you, where that has led you and sitting with that. So next is Moon and Libra. So you likely grew up in an interesting environment. Uh, you may have had this split kind of family or just um, maybe not necessarily literally split, but there was a kind of split where there was always something off balance and it was very prominently off balance. And you were kind of the one who felt like needed to be the peaceful uh, mediator, the negotiator, the person who's always trying to rebalance everything in there. Maybe that was a responsibility that you placed on yourself or that others placed on you. Uh, you see different perspectives. So you see the good and the bad. You see the two different families or the two different environments. In general too, you were the person with like the good, the nice, pleasant, uh, attitude and that was the atmosphere that you preferred. So take what you can from that story. What do you connect with in that? What does that mean about who you tend to attract? Uh, what is your relationship to peace and instability? Uh, something to take note is sometimes peace, in order to achieve peace, you actually have to tip the scales. Peace for the sake of peace, but also war for the sake of peace is something to consider. So in your relationships, when you're constantly focusing on the other person, because if you can focus on the other person, the assumption is that when the other person is satisfied, then the relationship is satisfied. But also kind of looking at uh, just because they are pleased doesn't mean that you are pleased. So understanding your relationship to balance, what it means for a relationship to feel balanced, and your relationship to being the one having to rebalance that. Next is Moon and Scorpio. So this is a fun one. Uh, I'm a Scorpio, not a Moon and Scorpio, um, but I feel I feel y'all. <laughs> I feel your pain. So childhood, very intense, significant power struggles. There was constantly issues about control or jealousy. Uh, very a bit heavier. Uh, than normal and it may have been something that people didn't really notice from the outside But it was what you experienced within feeling that you needed to dive into topics that maybe you weren't ready to dive into as a child But you had to do that so take what you connect with in that story and Consider where that means that you tend to go do you tend to go to relationships that do have this very heavy atmosphere of emotion and intensity, obsession, jealousy, and also to consider what is your relationship to stability, especially emotional stability. Because if you grew up in an emotionally heavy environment, you're going to be comfortable in delving into those kinds of things. So you're probably going to be seeking relationships that are a bit heavier in that sense. And if you are in a relationship that is really emotionally stable, it may just not feel comfortable. So just being aware of that and recognizing that that is something that perhaps that you need or something that uh, you just need to recognize in a more stable relationship that you can seek an outlet for outside of the relationship. All right, Sagittarius Moon. So you were likely encouraged intellectually a lot as a child and you soaked everything in. You loved talking about those big things like 
politics, religion, maybe you were in a very religious household, but it's definitely about studying and studying being very important, research being very important. Your parent likely is, was one to c explain those complex things and you were just sitting down ready to take it all. So there was definitely a love for learning and this is a constant stimulation as well of the mental. Freedom is also something that was important to you and that your parents really encouraged and also travel so maybe you took a lot of trips and that's like a highlight that you remember in your life. Uh, take what you can connect with that and seeing what that means about who you tend to attract and what you tend to bring into your life and what is your relationship to that independence and to that freedom and to travel. So if you're in a relationship where it feels stifling of course you're going to feel very uncomfortable or in a relationship where you're just living in one city and that's it that's going to feel very uncomfortable because you're used to really traveling so recognizing that All right moon and capricorn so it's likely that you were given a lot of responsibility as a child maybe you were the older sibling so you had to take care of everyone or you likely grew up in an environment where there was no father figure or there was no a strong boss in the family so you were the one to do the chores take care of everything that needed to be taken care of it's also possible that you grew up in a small business so your parents had a small business and they were constantly working and so you were also constantly working in there so your childhood is very much about work and doing and uh, building things reputation and how you look and what your work means was really important to you. You know that you are the role model, that you are being watched for what you do, and work is really important because if you don't do the work, then it's not gonna get done, or that's what you feel. Planning a strategy and building something of practical meaning is something that's really important to you also. And because you were taking care of everyone in getting the practical things done, maybe emotions weren't necessarily something that you really brought out into the open but is really something that you had it at closed doors and if there was a dominant emotion it would be sadness because it does feel like you have this burden uh, as a child so take what you connect with in that story and what does that mean about who you tend to attract and where you tend to go maybe the relationships that you tend to attract are relationships where there is a lot of work to be done or you tend to be the person who's pulling your partner into your work and maybe the partner is something is that's not something that they want so consider your relationship to laziness or maybe thought a different way, leisure, and how would the other person fit? Aquarius, you likely grew up in an environment with a family that was very emotionally detached. You were encouraged to be different or your family itself was very different. And there is kind of a little pain point there because you knew your family was different and maybe there are other people who said, ooh, they're different, that's weird. And so maybe in your own life you kind of hide this differentness, although you greatly acknowledge that you are different and that you are unique, maybe it's something that you don't try to share it to the whole world. But it is something that you do utilize in appreciating other people's differences and being able to create a community. Even if there are a lot of differences, there's also a lot of similarities. So take what you connect with in that, and from that seeing what you tend to attract or where you tend to go. What do you need in a relationship? You need something that is a bit more appreciative of your uniqueness and something that isn't the norm. And what is your relationship to the mainstream? So if there's a, a relationship that you've been in and they seem to be just kind of doing what everyone else is doing, that's not comfortable for you. You're, you want something that's going to be very different. So being able to recognize that and recognize that dissatisfaction in yourself stems from that part of who you are. And also, what is your relationship with attachment? So perhaps because maybe your family wasn't emotionally detached, that in general, connecting someone with someone emotionally isn't necessarily on your top priority. And so recognizing, especially if your partner is a bit more of an emotional person, recognizing that there is 
this separation of logic and emotion in your own mind and then also appreciating the more emotional side of your partner. All right, Pisces, so you likely grew up in an environment where there weren't really too many boundaries. Um, maybe you were the middle kid and so it was easy also for you to just kind of fly by and no one really noticed what's going on with you. Uh, your environment may have also been pretty spiritual or very full of compassion and empathy. There may have been a kind of taste of being dependent on others uh, just because other people seem to be taking care of things and you didn't really need to take care of things. You didn't really need to have that responsibility. Uh, music may have also been really important in your childhood. And it's also possible that maybe you felt isolated or abandoned, um, maybe ignored. So take what you can connect with in that and what that says about what you tend to attract. Do you tend to attract relationships in which the person doesn't seem to really care about you or it seems that you're actually choosing people who need help or you're choosing people who are going to help you. But either way, there is this kind of imbalance of boundaries, what your relationship to boundaries and to dependency is. If there is a relationship where there is more boundaries, what does that make you feel? Does that make you feel uncomfortable? And recognizing that why that is something you like and why that is something you don't like. 